The Modern Warfare 2 beta has come to a close, and with the game coming out soon, I figured now is a perfect time to discuss changes I think need to be made to the game in order to make it as good as it can be. Now these are all subjective, but I am aware that a lot of the community holds pretty similar sentiments to what I feel, so let's get started. The first thing I have on my list is streak animations. Some of the streak animations are a little bit janky and take a very long time to actually get to the point where you use the streak. And as soon as you're done using the streak, there's this big pop up in the left corner that takes up like a quarter of your screen it feels like that's just basically saying hey you use this thing. I feel like they just need to tone that down. Make the animations to use the streaks and getting into the streaks a little bit quicker and either get rid of or make that little pop up that comes up in the corner a little bit smaller. I think that's just a quick change that would just make the gameplay a little bit better. You're not wasting as much time pulling up a tablet. Next up, one of my major issues with the beta was the horizontal menu system. Now, while aesthetically it looks nice, functionally it doesn't work that well at all. I mean, Call of Duty's typically always had a vertical menu system, and that makes sense. I mean, you're able to fit more things on the screen, and it's just what gamers are used to. Having your creative classes be horizontal, selecting what game mode you're going to play be horizontal, just really kind of threw me for a loop. I'm sure it's something I'd get used to, but having things vertically makes it so much more easier. I mean, it's just what a lot of us are used to, and the horizontal UI is just not very user-friendly at all. It's just a vertical one would make the game so much better, and that's something I've seen in the subreddit quite frequently, that, that horizontal UI definitely needs to go. Next up on my list is a traditional prestige system. Now, since Call of Duty 2019, we haven't had a traditional prestige system. Prestiging works like this. Every single season, you reset your level. You're back to level 1, and you get to work your way back up all the way to the top of the food chain with however many prestiges they decide to release, usually 3 to 5 each season. And if at the end of all the seasons you've unlocked all the prestiges, you can become Prestige Master and get all the way up to level 1000 um, after the game's life cycle is over. I feel like a traditional prestige system just worked so much better. It gave people something to work for. Personally, I always loved prestiging in the old Call of Duty games. Like, there was a risk-reward to it. The risk was you lose all of your stuff, aside from camos, essentially, in a lot of the recent games. The reward is that you get this cool little icon, and you get to work for something else. Progression in games is key to keeping players around. If you don't have anything to work for, you have absolutely everything unlocked, then... Realistically, if the gameplay isn't the greatest thing in the world, you don't have any reason to keep playing. Now, I'm completely fine with having a uh, Master Prestige system where you can get up to level 1000, but have that after you reach the 10 or 15 Prestiges that are traditionally in the Call of Duty games. Uh, currently, with the Prestige system, you don't get to select when you Prestige. It's just as soon as you hit whatever the level cap is, you're automatically at the next Prestige. You may unlock a calling card, but nothing else reset. I think the traditional prestige system worked so much better because if you wanted to prestige and continue progressing and get more unlocks, you could do that. If you didn't want to lose all your progress, you also had the opportunity to not do that and just stick at whatever the level cap was. Next up, a big point of contention for a lot of people is skill-based matchmaking. Now, every single multiplayer game that has matchmaking is going to have skill-based matchmaking in one form or another. And in the most recent Call of Duties, it feels like it's been turned up to 11. Skill-based matchmaking is definitely in play in Modern Warfare 2, and there's a very simple fix for it. Tone down skill-based matchmaking in the core modes. Of course, there's always going to be some sort of skill-based matchmaking, but if you're not playing a ranked mode, there doesn't need to be strict skill-based matchmaking matchmaking. Sure, for the super casual players, uh, strict skill-based matchmaking can help them. They're playing people of a similar level. But every single match, when you have strict skill-based matchmaking in core modes, just feels like you're playing a competitive game. If I wanted to play competitive, I would go into the competitive game mode. I'm not saying get rid of skill-based matchmaking completely. I'm saying tone it down a good amount for non-ranked modes. It would just make the game feel a little bit better and not that every match is going to be a sweat fest. You'd actually be able to use some weapons that are off meta and maybe try some new things and have a little bit of fun with it because as it stands right now you're kind of at a disadvantage if you're not using meta weapons. 
Next up, something the community completely hates as well is the minimap. Now, personally, I don't care which way the minimap goes, but the minimap system is different than the traditional Call of Duty. Traditional Call of Duty had the minimap in the corner there, and if an enemy fired an unsuppressed weapon, they would pop up as a red dot on that minimap for a couple seconds. This would give you a good indicator as to where people are in the map, and gave a reason to use a suppressor other than just dulling the sound when you're actually playing in-game. Personally, myself, I, again, I don't care which way they do. I'm fine with a traditional minimap system, and I'm completely okay with the, the current one. They still pop up on your compass. While it doesn't give you as much information, the information is still there. The community completely hates the change to the minimap, and like I said, if they change it, then they're going to make a lot of people happy. Personally, it could go either way for me. Next is the footsteps audio. Now, Call of Duty has always usually had some sort of perk that dulls your footstep audio, uh, but in COD 2019 and in Modern Warfare 2, we have dead silence as a field upgrade, so something you can't have active all the time, and it's something that you have a cooldown on, so you can only use it for a little bit of time, and you can't use it indefinitely. I feel like the footstep audio is just super loud in Modern Warfare 2. I mean, I was even watching the video Drifter made where he said he has super sensitive ears and he can still hear the footsteps. So while it's good for him that footsteps are super loud, um, I just feel like the core of it is that footsteps are just a little bit too loud. It feels like you have cinder blocks on the bottom of your feet. Now, of course, in terms of realism, real soldiers carrying a lot of tactical gear and weapons are probably going to make a good amount of noise, but this is a video game we're talking about, Call of Duty specifically. This is not a hyper-realistic game. I don't think the footstep audio needs to be one-to-one -one with what it is in real life. Another thing is a post-match scoreboard and the death on the scoreboard. Now, as it stands, they've kind of taken away how many deaths you have on the scoreboard in-game, unless it's a, a game that is specific about deaths but like domination you can't see how many times you died and after the match traditionally you get a post-match recap here here's how good you did your kd how many deaths you got how many kills you got your best streak the medals you earned that wasn't really present in modern warfare 2 which is a little bit strange for me i mean i just liked seeing how i did post game if i did really well of course i'm gonna know i'm doing really well in game and i know if i'm doing really bad in game but being able to see your accurate kd in the game is just really nice that way it lets me know hey oh damn i got 24 kills right now and i've only died once like i'm doing very good like i said of course you're gonna know if you're doing good in the game but i don't know why they really got rid of the traditional kills and deaths on the scoreboard mid game uh obviously most people's inkling is the fact that super casual players uh aren't gonna want to be able to see how many deaths they have it might turn them off from the game if they know they're going two and 20 but if you're doing that bad i feel like you know you're not doing very great uh, traditional deaths in KD on scoreboard is definitely a big plus and I think should be added into the game. Uh, same with a post-match scoreboard. And finally, on my list, I have the spectator cam. Now, as it stands right now, I actually really like the implementation they had of the spectator cam in Modern Warfare 2. It's like a little GoPro on the top of an operator's helmet. So when you die, say, in Search and Destroy, you could spectate your teammates, and it's from the perspective of this camera. You're not getting a first-person view. I feel like there should be a toggle for this, a traditional first person point of view if you're spectating somebody or a toggle to keep it at that that little gopro um, headset mounted camera the reason i say this is because being able to see what your teammate is doing accurately in the first person perspective kind of lets you learn a little bit about the game you can see how their movements are what they're doing with their weapon and exactly how they're playing and potentially see what weapon they're using with what attachments seeing the first person perspective lets you maybe get a little bit more of an indication as to what type of player this person is and you could potentially pick up some new skills to use in the future in terms of maybe their map knowledge or how they move or how they're doing things. Again, I do like how the spectator cam is. I feel like a toggle option would just be the best of both worlds. The people who like the traditional first person uh, spectating cam would be able to choose that. And the people that are a fan of this kind of realistic GoPro helmet mounted cam thing would be happy as well. And that's my list. That's some things I think should be changed in Modern Warfare 2 to just help make the game the best it can be. As it stands right now, Modern Warfare 2019 was probably one of my favorite CODs of all time, especially recently as opposed to Vanguard and Cold War. And Modern Warfare 2, after playing the beta, is a ton of fun. There's just some quality of life changes that I think need to be made, which I'm sure that Infinity Ward is working on. 
Let me know what you guys think about this list in the comments down below. I know there's a few things I missed out on, so that's where the discussion is going to be. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates.